Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I did a video yesterday where I discussed a study showing that half reps compared to full range of motion reps produce dramatically less muscle, dramatically less strength gains, even when much heavier weights were used uh, to be closer to the, the same sort of rep maxes that were being used on the full range of motion. So in other words, the partials were done with heavier weight, much heavier weight. Uh, again, in order to compensate for the shorter range of motion and leverage advantages, and it still produced inferior results. And the question that comes up is about the deadlift. So let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing, work on skill, not my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. And that's actually a valid question. When people bring up the topic of, well, you're saying that when a muscle tr is trained through less than its effective range of motion, less than its maximum effective range of motion, that it elicits a smaller training response and it gets, it gets stronger and bigger with less response. Uh, and that's absolutely true. Absolutely true. From everything that we can see in the data, the research, the observations, uh, again, that's why people who <laughs> don't compete in a sport that has a limited range of motion or different strength curve don't really do partials. Uh, other than certain, again, sport-specific applications. Uh, for example, I mean, a, a push press is a perfect example. It has a sport-specific carryover to sprinting, to jumping, all right? Even the power clean does too. Both of those have very sport-specific carryover to certain, certain things, but they may not always make those muscles the strongest for the fullest range of motion or put the most development on, on them, like the quads. The quads are not going to get maximal development from those two exercises, even though they give them a very specific strength curve and performance curve, just like doing a partial bench press. Bench pressing with a slingshot will not make you as strong and will not make your pecs as big as doing the exact same perceived exertion with a pause bench. It won't, it can't. So we get over to that question of the deadlift, uh, because the deadlift's a different animal. You know, it's a different animal. It's programmed differently. It has a different training response than most other big exercises. And most coaches know that. They don't have you usually, especially for a novice, or on the same sort of programming on the deadlift, they do your other lifts. There's reasons for that. Uh, because yeah, the deadlift uses more muscles in the body than any other exercise. That's just pretty fair to say. At least uses them to a large degree. However, a very large number of the muscles involved in the deadlift are not worked through their maximum effective range of motion. They aren't. Uh, but it uses everything. And now the interesting thing with that, so we can go back and say, so you're saying that the deadlift will not maximize size and strength in all the muscles it's working? That's correct. It will not do so. It still makes them grow, just like half reps make you grow, right? The study still showed muscle growth from a half squat. They still showed muscle growth from a half leg extension. You still get muscle growth from a half curl, just not as much as if you do the full rep for similar amounts of intensity. So we could conclude that training the deadlift will make you stronger at the deadlift because it has the sport specific carryover to the deadlift. It will activate uh, a lot of the muscle fibers in those same muscles that can work the full range of motion and it will work the muscle fibers that only work the partial range of motion. All right? That's why the deadlift <laughs> is better than a rack pull, an above the knee rack pull. Absolutely, yes, because it works all the same muscles, but a little bit more, and works other muscles in addition to it. Because uh, again, the longer range of motion. So that being said, does that mean that the deadlift is the best exercise for size and strength? No, it actually isn't. It actually isn't. It's a great exercise, uh, and it's a great competitive lift, but I wouldn't necessarily have every athlete walking the face of the earth do deadlifts. And that might sound like blasphemy as a very pro-deadlift guy. I love deadlifts. I love deadlifts. Even when I quit squatting for over a year, I kept deadlifting at least once or twice a week. I love the lift, one of my favorites. But truth be told, that's the interesting thing with the deadlift. That's why there's two different schools of thought with training it. One school of thought is you train the deadlift specifically a lot to get good at the deadlift. 
The other school of thought, and this has been just as successful, use other lifts to get strong at the deadlift. Because we go back to that other point, since most of the muscles or many, at least half of the muscles used in the deadlift are either uh, contracted isometrically or through a partial that's half or less of their full effective range of motion, if you train all those same muscles with another big exercise, it will carry over directly to the deadlift. In other words, you could get really strong at squats, rows, power cleans, and never do a deadlift and walk in and deadlift 450, 500 pounds your first time you try the lift. Like literally the very first day you do a deadlift in your entire life. Why? Because all of those exercises work the same muscles of the deadlift through a longer range of motion with a heavy weight when they're combined together. So yeah, you could combine those exercises and build a monstrous deadlift. In fact, you could come in and only and maybe do a deadlift set, one or two sets every two weeks and continue to get stronger on your deadlift if you do those. And I know guys who do that. I have met lifters who deadlift 700 pounds who only deadlift once every two weeks. They do exist. They're strong squatters. They're strong overall pullers. So that kind of goes to that other point. Yeah, those other exercises can build your deadlift because they can maximally develop all the muscles involved in the deadlift. And that'll give you the base to, to be a good deadlifter. You just then have to learn the skill. Doesn't mean the deadlift isn't a great exercise. Doesn't mean it isn't a great exercise. Uh, but it does mean that there will be cases where a deadlift, even if you care about your deadlift, you might need to set it on the back burner for a bit to focus on general size and strength or to focus on something specifically such as a squat. Like I'm squatting every day right now. I can't deadlift very frequently. I can't do that. I can use the other lifts to build my deadlift. So there is some truth to what the person is saying and what they're asking. Does that mean that the deadlift can't maximally develop all those muscles? Yeah, there's a lot of muscles that can't maximally develop, but I can tell you ones that it sure does develop very effectively. All your erectors, your spinal erectors, thoracic erectors, your glutes. Uh, to some extent, your lats, uh, which might sound like it's counterintuitive, but I think it has to do with the actual range of motion. It does work. The lats is a very, very effective one. Uh, meaning the, the lats have to contract quite hard even in that position that you have them in in the deadlift. Uh, again, it's kind of that peak contracted position. That is not the strongest position for the lats. Uh, but it has the, the capacity to recruit a lot of muscle fibers there. Now, can it build as big a lats as, say, a weighted pull-up or weighted chin-up? Probably not. But that goes back to that other point a longer range of motion and that's the other reason I tell guys is if you're, you're chasing general size uh, doing some deficit deadlifts in place of your normal deadlifts would be a good idea and doing the sumo deadlift wouldn't be a good idea at all because again if we're trying to get a longer range of motion we're trying to get total muscle fiber recruitment the deficit deadlift even with a slightly lighter weight probably a slightly superior hypertrophy exercise but I think what needs to be kept in mind with the deadlift is that we go back to if you are doing multiple other big, heavy compound movements that are working most of those muscles through a full range of motion, the deadlift itself, even though it's a primary exercise, can be a supplemental lift because of the number of muscles it adds additional workload to. But it is fair to say that the deadlift and even some deadlift variations, I don't care whether it's a rack pull, a block pull, a sumo, a, can, uh, a deficit deadlift, there are many of the muscles worked in the deadlift that you cannot develop maximum size and strength in off the deadlift alone due to lack of effective range of motion or the fact that they're just held isometrically. In other words, having big traps can help you with your deadlift, but a deadlift itself is probably for most people not going to maximize trap development. There are other big barbell movements that recruit the traps far more effectively because they're held isometrically. And uh, by that same token, a heavy rack pull doesn't improve that. You're adding more weight to a muscle that's already stretched and held isometrically. You're going from 500 pounds to 700 pounds. It's probably not going to be a noticeable difference. Just basic biomechanics. Just common sense looking at the way muscles work. Uh, same thing. Biceps might get a little bit of growth on the deadlift because they're being stretched and held isometrically with a heavy weight. 
But are you going to build 18-inch biceps with a deadlift? I seriously doubt it. Maybe if you're a genetic freak, you will. But I can tell you right now, the majority of people are going to have to do an exercise that moves their bicep through a full range of motion for many, many years to build 18-inch biceps. The deadlift is probably not going to do it. It can stimulate a little bit of growth. It might add an inch to your biceps if that's all you did over the course of a couple of years. But it won't add as much as a chin-up or a curl will. And that's the way to look at it. For a lot of these muscles, it's a good secondary exercise to get some, some additional stimulation and trains your body to work together as one unit. So what the deadlift ultimately comes down to is it, it is an effective exercise for training the body to work as one unit provided you're doing enough other exercises to build all that muscle mass up. Uh, but all those other lifts will carry over to the deadlift better than the deadlift carries over to the other lifts. In other words, a really strong squat will help build your deadlift. But building a really strong deadlift will only carry over a little bit to your squat. Same thing. Weighted chin-ups, weighted pull-ups will help your deadlift improve. But the deadlift won't improve the weighted pull-up and the weighted chin-up as much as they will improve the deadlift. And that's the way to look at it. It doesn't always work all directions. All right, guys. Well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.